A high tunnel, sometimes called a hoop house, is basically an inexpensive greenhouse structure in which we grow crops directly in the ground. There's lots of different shapes and sizes, uh, ways that they're managed, either three season or four season for high tunnels. So there's a variety of options that growers can utilize to help protect their crops and get some season extension and help bring crops to market earlier. Two different types of high tunnels include Quonset or hoop style high tunnels or Gothic style high tunnels. Typically the Gothic style high tunnels are stronger and hold better against snow loads, but may be more expensive than the hoops. Uh, the other advantage to using the hoop houses, it's a little easier to put plastic on them, whereas the Gothic style tunnels are a little tougher to pull plastic on and they can cause wear at the peaks of the actual plastic. There's also three season tunnels, and three season tunnels we would actually take the plastic off of them during the winter time and that would allow rain to infiltrate into the soil and help maintain soil quality. So there's a lot of advantages in that way. Unfortunately, in a three season tunnel, you can't grow winter crops. So many of our growers utilize four season high tunnels where the plastic is on them all throughout the winter and we can grow cool season crops typically throughout the entire course of the winter. There's a number of advantages to growing in hoop houses. First of all is environmental protection, and in places like the Great Plains of the Midwest, this is one of the key advantages to growing in hoop houses. Hoop houses provide protection from the wind and the rain, storms, hail, other things that can quickly devastate crops when we get large storms that blow across the Great Plains. They also help for disease management. One of the key components for disease in the crop is by the leaves being wet. So since hoop houses keep the leaves dry, uh, oftentimes you have much lower disease pressure in them. High tunnels help extend the season actually in a couple of different ways. You can plant earlier in the high tunnel and we typically plant warm season crops 30 days before the last frost free date in Kansas. That's what's typically recommended here and really nationwide. And this also extends into the fall too. So you can grow crops all the way until Thanksgiving and maybe we'll get some light frosts in October. The high tunnel is going to be able to protect the plants from those light frosts in the fall and be able to provide you with fall crops like tomatoes or cucumbers where you wouldn't be able to in the open field. One of the other big advantages, especially here in the Midwest, is we get a lot of spring storms and a lot of turbulent weather in the early spring. And even though it may be past the late frost free date, it's very hard and stressful on the plants. And so what we see is the plants will get up and establish very quickly in the spring and start to put on a fruit load or bear some type of harvestable product much earlier just because the health of the plant is that much better. In the same way, it also protects those transplants too. Typically when we plant tomatoes here in Kansas, because we have such terrible winds, we may have to replant as much as 20 to 30% of our transplants. Whereas in a high tunnel, you don't hardly have to replant at all. Selecting a site for a high tunnel is very important, and this is oftentimes the first mistake a grower can make when putting up a high tunnel for the first time. For one thing, you want to have good ventilation so that the wind can blow side to side and, and ventilate the tunnel very easily. The other thing that's really important is drainage. When the rain comes down and runs off of the tops of that high tunnel, it can collect and pool very quickly. So we like to put it on top of a hill or build a swale around the tunnel so that the water will drain quickly away from the tunnel and not pond up. It's important to keep in mind that probably the high tunnel is about the most valuable piece of real estate on the farm for a vegetable grower. So if there's any chance that water's gonna run back into that tunnel and cause ponding and water issues, that's a big, big problem. Many growers will amend the soil with compost or composted manure to help increase the organic matter and improve the microbial ecology of the soil. And it's also a good idea if it's an area that's been compacted to do some primary tillage or use a deep chisel plow or something to make sure you can rip up any compaction layers before you actually build the tunnel and make it unable to get a tractor through. So it's important to be very proactive when maintaining soil quality in the high tunnel. Keep in mind that unless you have a mobile high tunnel, this is going to be the soil that you're going to be growing in for a very long time. And so it's important to maintain as high a soil quality as possible. 
we like to add some compost or manure, especially early on in the tunnel's life, in order to improve that soil. But it may not be a good idea to do that on a yearly basis. Because it doesn't rain inside the high tunnel, there's no leaching and nutrients and nutrient buildup and soil salinity can be a real problem in high tunnels. So one of the things we recommend is to not add lots and lots of compost every year, but rather put some on early and then use as little as possible in order to maintain the productivity of that crop. The other thing that's really good for soil quality is to use cover crops in the high tunnel. There's a variety of winter and summer cover crops that can be used in high tunnels that grow very rapidly, produce a lot of biomass, and help improve the soil quality quite a bit. When thinking about growing cover crops in a high tunnel, what you want to do is use crop species that are going to maximize their biomass production very, very quickly. And inside a high tunnel, you'll be amazed at how quickly some of these cover crops will grow as long as you can get water to them. Here in Kansas, uh, during the winter time, we can grow something like winter rye or winter wheat as a cover crop, and it'll do very well inside of the high tunnel. It's also good to mix these with legumes like hairy vetch or crown vetch or even annual crimson clover. After they grow for four to five weeks and put on a pretty good amount of biomass, typically we want about 10 tons per acre of biomass and that can add a significant amount of nitrogen back for the following crop. Then we'll actually mow those down with either a flail mower or like a small brush hog and then we'll till those in.